Inkedink, 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 Wow! Okay. Um, not the cat in the hat phone. No, no, not the cat, cat in the hat phone. Not the um, not the Nickelodeon phone. Okay. Not the uh, inky dinky phone. Dazzle said. <laughs> So we're going to have to bump up our callers in, at least the ones that are the cats for the uh, for the Republican candidates. We've got to bump them up a little bit. We can't. We're not going to take them on the micro inky dinky phone. We reserve that for folks that are really, to Basil's mind's eye, inconsequential. Like, uh, for instance, this guy always calls it on the micro inky dinky phone. At least that's how we receive his calls. We're going to bump them up all the way to the inky dinky phone to begin with. Hello, um, Basil Buddha Cat presents. Um, and who might this be? Okay. okay apparently, it's um, it's the cat of uh, Dr. Ben Carson. And uh, Basil knows Basil knows him a little bit. He's spoken with with him a bit. And uh, his um, his name is Whisper. And. Uh, Okay, uh, Whisper, I, I, I can... Okay, I you're, sort of hear you. Whisper, why Why did Dr. Ben Carson um, choose to name you Whisper? What? What? You have to speak up a little bit. Okay. Okay. I can't hear you, but, you know, it's... No, we're not going to get much out of this interview, Basil. But um, but um, thank you for calling um, and uh, get with your um, get with your voice coach and uh, see if you can uh, amp up that um, that sotto voce a little bit. Okay, so this it's your turn to waste for me this time. Okay, I'm I'm off stage. Decided to uh, decided to. To change ties. I'm coming. I'll be there in a minute, Basil. Okay, hold on. I'm coming. Be there in just a minute. I'm just getting ready. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Blessed Sunday morning. It's welcome to Basil Buddha Cat presents. Um, our next uh, our next portion of the Basilophon is brought to you by oh hold on remember we used to have we used to have um, Hershey's Kisses as one of our corporate sponsors but apparently they didn't like the fact that we kept telling them, we kept telling the audience that if they wanted to know why uh, Hershey's Kisses were Basil Buddha Cat's candy of choice, all they had to do was look in his litter pan. So, so here we go. This is um, this is our our response to Hershey's Kisses. Hershey's Kisses uh, giving us the uh, the old ungatsa. And uh, blowing us off as a corporate sponsor. Um, this is our our uh, first annual 
Hershey's Kiss WGAF Award. And uh, this is our first annual award. We're handing it out to um, Hershey's Kisses. Okay. Okay. We'll hold that off and uh, send that off to them. Well, here's one of the ingredients. Apparently, one of the extra ingredients. And um, well, where to go to? Oh, there it is. Okay. Christian's favorite carrot juice. And we're not putting the juicer. We're not, we're not putting the juicer on on screen yet because we have got to wait till we get the endorsement and get our first our, our first paycheck from from carrot farmers everywhere. So, send the money along, and then we'll 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 turn that uh, turn that cashola into some um, into some some words on your behalf. In the meanwhile, just remember, that the best carrot juice in the world, made by Kristen wouldn't be the same without the apple. Mmm. Okay. So on Friday night show, in the beginning of Basil Gudapudaka presents the Silathon hour number two, we had a call in. We're doing the Republican Party candidates, but Basil said it's much better if we get calls from the candidates' house cats. And the first one didn't go very well, did it? I mean, we got we got a call in from um, Dr. Ben Carson's uh, house cat, Whisper, and true to form didn't really didn't really get very far in that conversation unfortunately so oh okay look looks like we've got uh, another another hint as far as what's so great about Kristen's carrot juice now you think this is a banana and uh, if you look it sort of looks like a banana okay Looks a little like a banana, but in fact, it's a plantain, or uh, in Espanol, plantano. Uh, and uh, just a reminder that Basil Budacat is also broadcast, not in SAP, but in CAT. So, if you need a translation... You cats out there in the audience, which you shouldn't, because you generally speak the language of your um, of your peoples. You know, you learn your peeps' language, and so you know what they're saying, even though they generally have not much of an idea what you're saying. So, one of the secret ingredients we're giving it away right now in Kristen's famous carrot juice is a plantado. How much? Not telling you. How much riper it has to get because you need to get them nice and ripe, fry them up, and then I guess you can uh, juice them. But they're just amazingly sweet when they uh, when they get fried. So you can have your little, little bit of uh, plantano in the um, right in your uh, right in your carrot juice concoction. You can also have a little bit of a little dish of it on the side, and they are great. What do you mean? I don't care if we use the word great. Get them got that. They don't have that. Um, they, nobody's got that word. No way. No way. Nobody owns the word great. Not even Tony Tiger. Basil said, 
said it's Tony the tiger and it's important to remember that okay well uh, we'll keep that in mind so let's get our let's get our list out so we can remember I mean there's only about 117 of them okay candidates and Okay. You really expect he's not even a candidate anymore. He dropped out after he got minus eight percent in Iowa. There were people that were going into the caucuses, into the Republican caucuses, just so they could say when the question was asked, Is anybody here representing Mike Huckabee? People would go, would be there just so they could answer the word nope. And as it turns out, Basil's, Basil's informed me that. There, there. Let's, that, oh, that one scratch a little bit better. Okay, okay. That's uh, Donald the Ch- Trump. <laughs> Basil said, you've not had it right. He said, <laughs> said you, had, you had it right when you started to say chump. So, the so Mutt Huckabee didn't do too well in Iowa. And he decided that before before all was lost, he'd, he'd step, a, step aside gracefully. And go back to playing the bass with um, with Ted Nugent, and we haven't had, we haven't done anything about Ted Nugent on this show in oh my gosh a year or so. Okay, Basil said. Uh, <laughs> said I I need to get. That that hideous song "Cat Scratch Fever" out of my head. Every time you mention the guy, I get "Cat Scratch Fever" running through running through my brain, in and out my ears, around my whiskers, pulling on my whiskers, and and I really don't want to be talking about that dude. Um, but hold on, I'll see if I can find. No, that's not it. That's that's "Let It Be" by the Beatles. Hold on. Closer, closer. Okay, okay, okay. How about? Uh, no, that's "Give Me Shelter" by the Rolling Stones. No, no. That's Adele, one of Adele's songs. Okay, no, that's not it. That's um. Wait a second, hold on. That's Jay-Z. I don't recognize the song. That is, um... Hold on. No. Hey, there we go. That's uh, that's Ted Nugent doing scratch... Ted Nugent doing catch scratch fever. So there you go. Um, so, so Ted Nugent and Mike Huckabee, Ted plays... Kinda. <laughs> plays the guitar. Um... And Mike Huckabee on bass. And they do this song, this song called You Guys Are All Misinterpreting the Meaning of Cat Scratch Fever. And I, I don't think he can run away from this because, um, because in fact, the song Cat Scratch Fever, listen to the lyrics, read the lyrics. Uh, he's, he's talking about having, having sexual relations with someone for the first time when he was 10 years old. And somewhere, apparently somewhere in, embedded in that song, if you play a portion of it backwards and then forwards and then backwards and forwards, sideways, upside down, you know, all those at once, you find out that the, um, 
that the girl that he's having intimate relations with for the first time is actually a lot younger than him. So she's not even 10 years old. He's been trying to run away from that song for, for a while. And uh, can't do it. Sorry. So why a guy like Mike Huckabee, who claims to be fairly Christian in nature, claims why he's playing a song with that kind of message involved in it about, about little boys and little girls having intimate relations with one another. And Now, I know at the time Mike Huckabee was governor, and before him Bill Clinton, the, um, the age consent for marriage was um, three months. <laughs> Bas- Basil said, <laughs> said, uh, actually it was three months in the womb was the uh, age of consent in uh, Arkansas. They raised it up to it, so you got to be, you got to be um, actually born and uh, eight months old now before before you can uh, before before you reach the age of consent in Arkansas. So Huckabee has a cat. Now it's cat Basil. Basil's had a conversation with him. He just rolls his eyes every time he talks about them. But because um, Basil can't figure out why in the world this cat doesn't go out the cat door and. Uh, <laughs> Scamper across the river to Memphis, Memphis, and see if he can find uh, see if he can find uh, some some cooler cats over there than there are in Arkansas. So, now you remember when um, you remember when Kristen and I went on our cross country tour last May, and one of the stops we made was a little town in Arkansas that had uh, a problem with the um, original Keystone pipeline about three years ago. And uh, we had some good conversations with folks in, in City Hall, and, uh, and they directed us to the neighborhood that had been most, uh, most uh, damaged by the, um, by the oil spill from the pipeline. And this is the original Keystone Pipeline that uh, dates back quite a few years. And uh, the neighborhood, as of now, because they had about, I think it was about two feet of oil in their neighborhood, so it found its way into every house. Um, did a lot of damage to every house, and of course they had to, you know, come in and drag and, and, and dig away quite a bit of, of earth throughout the entire neighborhood, and it was just a mess, just a mess. We, when we were out there in May, they were beginning little by little to sell off after the houses had been uh, completely refurbished. They. Um, they were selling them off. And these were not old houses. These were houses that dated, I'm going to say, less than 10 years. They were reselling the houses and uh, just let them sit on the market until they finally got somebody to pay fairly close to market value because the houses were, in fact, they had been refurbished to, um, to essentially brand new. And so they, at face value, they certainly were, were worth um, fairly close to what a house in another neighborhood would be worth. So actually, we met a, a neighbor and uh, learned a little bit about the um, a little bit about the process because the neighbor was was somebody that had, had just recently purchased one of those houses. And uh, what, what? Dazzle said, "Could you just could you step out of the room for a moment? I gotta I gotta have a little FaceTime with my audience." Better to quote him first. <laughs> Said, uh, could I have a little, uh, a little FaceTime with my audience, and uh, could you step out of the room for a second, and uh, and then maybe come back in? Uh, thanks. Except you didn't say thanks. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'll do it. Long enough. Said, uh, 
So that don't take very long. It doesn't take very long for me to, to get get my point across. And who in the heck is? Well, you know, he's back there again. So, so um, does uh, does Donald Trump have have a house cat? Hmm. Basil uh, Basil shot that with. Um, Said, uh, said, yeah, he does. We had him on, talked to at least one of them on the show a few weeks ago. And uh, Trump has 12 cats. And we did the show, I think, was entitled The 12 Cats of Trump Must. Um, and no pipers piping, no drummers drumming, no maids milking, no etc., etc., etc. But every cat that Donald Trump owns, all 12 of them, are all named Whitey. And I'm not as... It doesn't jog my memory that much, but apparently Basil remembers the conversations that, that he and I had with, um, with um, one of them or all of them or what, whoever, whichever ones. And, okay, okay. Hmm. Basil said, (laughs) said, aren't you even going to ask me why are all of Donald Trump's 12 cats, all 12 of his house cats, why are all of them named Whitey? Okay, I'll ask you. Why are all of Donald Trump's 12 house cats, why are all of them named Whitey? There's a punchline coming up here somewhere. Okay, Basil, Basil's flicking his left ear. He's closed his eyes a little bit further, tilted his head a little further, adjusted his tie, wiggled his feet in their slippers, and he said, uh, said, uh, why do you even have to ask? Okay. So, okay, so, so, we're still working on the big account. We call it the big account because Clydesdales are pretty big horses. We've been trying to get, and we're still working on it, we're trying to get Budweiser, the Budweiser account, the um, apparently last year the uh, National Football League had a little problem with um, with Budweiser as as sponsoring as Budweiser being the, the National Football League's corporate sponsor because um, some of their players well some of them yeah, beat up their wives some of them beat up their kids some of them beat up their uh, their teammates. Some of them um, beat up. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say themselves. That's. I guess I just did. Um, so, anyway, so we're going for um, we're going for the Budweiser account, and uh, I know you're going to mess this up, Basil, because I know if, if we get that account, I know you're going to have something to say, probably in the same vein as the remarks about Hershey's Kisses. Oh, and then, by the way, um, um, we're looking for um, looking for nominees for the second annual coming up, the second annual Hershey, Hershey's Kiss Award. So we can uh, present this fine, this fine, uh, fine, uh, whatever it is, to, um, to Hershey's Kiss to the Hershey's Kiss 
second annual award winner. So, so the football players, not a good year for them. Kind of, kind of irked Budweiser a little bit because apparently every time that these football players are are doing these um, pretty despicable things to their wives, to their kids, etc., etc. Et um, every time before they were doing that, they were drinking Budweiser, and. You gotta remember, if we can lay in the account, Basil, you need to stop telling that story about ah! Even Whiskers remembers that story. <laughs> Don't tell the story about how when I used to take the kids to Mesquamacut Beach in Rhode Island years ago. Now, we used to reconnect with Interstate 95 right about the spot where the Budweiser distributorship is along Interstate 95. And in the yard, they've got this large, looming statue. It might be, might be varnished wood. It might be plastic. Who knows what it is. But it's of the, um, the Budweiser Clydesdale. And Basil, you you got to get out of the habit of, of forcing me to tell that story about how we'd go past that statue in this yard of this distributorship, and I'd ask the kids, um, kids, where do you think the Budweiser, the beer, comes out of that statue? And kids being kids, you know, kids kids are very happy with bathroom humor. So, no, come on, I'm not going to, you want me to leave the room again for a moment because you want to have another, uh, another tete-a-tete with your, uh, with your audience? No. You know, you can only talk to the cats because without me, you really can't, you really can't uh, get a, uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. He said, uh, he said, uh, it's only the cats in the audience that really matter most to him. Now who's pandering? Okay, hold on. I'll leave for a moment. Be right back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He said, um, sign off wants me to sign off, say goodbye until next Friday night, and we'll continue with Hour 3 of um, Basil Buddha Cat Presents, exclamation point, the Basilathon. And uh, Basil says that, uh, amazingly enough, those Denver Broncos that won the Super Bowl, season's over, and they're still holding their daily scrimmages. Amazing. The dedication is phenomenal. Ben Basil Budicat presents. Have a blessed Sunday, rest of the week. See you Friday night. Yada, 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 yada. And there you go. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.